Over the past year, I've beaten increasingly difficult Pokemon Hardcore Nuzlocke challenges of games like Renegade Platinum, Blaze Black 2, Inclement Emerald, and Radical Red. Last month, I decided it's finally time to take on the hardest Pokemon challenge ever, a Hardcore Nuzlocke of Emerald Kaizo. This is a soul-crushing difficulty ROM hack of Pokemon Emerald, designed to break your spirit and push your skills to the absolute limit. Here are the rules for this challenge, which can also be found in the description below. This is the beginning of the story of my greatest gaming challenge yet. The journey begins with Trico as my starter in Little Root Town, and I carefully make my way to Rustboro City, picking up some really solid early game encounters along the way, with Spiro and Bellsprout being the notable standouts. While the early game trainers are built different compared to their vanilla game counterparts, the first real battle is against a familiar face. Red comes equipped with his iconic Kanto team from Heart Gold and Soul Silver, but I managed to take him down without too much trouble. After dealing with Red, I scoop up a few more encounters and head to Rustboro City to challenge the first gym of Emerald Kaizo. Gym 1 is where I really start to feel the Kaizo difference, facing off against Pokemon like Sudowoodo and Yanma that could just sweep your entire team this early on. I clear the trainers though and gear up to face the first gym lead. Alright, Teach. I'm the one putting you in detention this time, okay? You're in big trouble. You've been really, really naughty in class. Okay. If if uh, Water Pulse high rolls here, then we activate Citrus, and it's pretty bad. But <sighs> let me let me look at the rolls on this one more time. I'm scared. Should just T wave us. Confuse would be really nice too. Unlucky. Okay. So we water pulse now. I am. Pl I was planning to potentially sack Goldeen, so I'm trying. I'm trying not to, but it's the main angle we were going for. If that didn't work out, I'm gonna go for it. Okay. Under fifty. No confuse. We need some luck here, so we got to get a high roll to kill here. So this should just be S toss. It can't attract us. <sighs> Oh, shit. Okay. Oh, goodbye, Goldeen. Uh. Woo! All right. So if I go Kabuto, we get straight into Anorith, which I think is what we want. The reason we couldn't lead Kabuto was because of the ranges. So this gives us the kind of preferred route. We don't have to do any weird stuff. We have to dodge two crits, essentially. Yo, actually, we just dodge one crit. Can we hit the Rock Tomb? And then we're faster. We gotta dodge crit. No BA is very scary. Generally, you do want to lead Kabu, kill Nosepass, get Anorith in. We just couldn't do it with our Kabu. All right, big Rock Tomb. Don't crit. This never crits, trust me. My uncle works for Nintendo. Easy, easy. Now we're faster, we get the big Orin Berry, and we're killing this thing. This should always kill, right? How much would we even get back, though? 7 to 10%. That's pretty solid, actually. That's not bad. Okay, nice. We're in a pretty good position. It's pretty clean, pretty clean. Here it is. The demon, baby. This is the one. This is where things really get interesting. This is always Giga Drain. So we're gonna go in the Weeping Bell and get Toxic up on this thing. We're on demon time, yeah. We eat this, though. We eat this up. Docto, we're gonna Toxic, and we're gonna have to pivot around and dodge crits, AP boosts. Okay, we Toxic. Now the real fun begins. No boosters, no boosters, no boosters in chat. No boosters. Okay. Nice. Okay, so we want non-crit, non-boost, and then Giga Drain, we go back in the Weeping Bell. No boosters. No boosters. So let's go back into Bell. Nice, we get Ornberry. Alright, I'm gonna stay. We gotta dodge crit here. No boosts, no crits. Alright, there's the Citrus. Meryl, if this doesn't get crit, will always bait Giga Drain. And then I think this thing can kill. Okay. Oh, it poisons. Come on, man. 
That's so bad. That's so bad. We've gotten pretty lucky with all the APs we've eaten, though, so I suppose our luck had to run out at some point. After toxic damage, we should always kill. Alright. We're gonna get a boost here. Trust me. We get boost here. Okay. Demon number one is down. I didn't even think to go Petra Berry on Meryl. I was never planning to switch Meryl in there, TBH. There's F***. Woo! I think get Toxic online and then get Meryl in to start charming. Possible Toxic, likely curse. Roll out. Okay, it attacks. I gotta, I gotta risk Bell here, I think. Alright, 56% chance to kill. It has a 15% chance to miss. And if it crits, we just die. Come on, baby. Come on, Bell. Big hold Vitamix. Big hold Vitamix. Come on. Oh, Vitamix, please. Oh, it crits, you piece of sh Okay, so rather than sack Yanma, we just go straight into Meryl. That's that's a rough loss. Yeah, we've got our Orin Berry. I guess sacking Yanma, then going Kabu gives us two more toxic turns. Yeah, I'm going to go Yanma first. Grovile does about a fourth. So Rock Tomb and Water Pulse are our highest rolls. So I guess we go... We don't need to outspeed this. So we go Water Pulse and try to get the Fat Confuse. That'll maybe help restart rollout at least. Okay, it's cursing up. So we just keep water pulsing from here. It should curse again, yeah. And then we can go grow vile and finish this off. And then get a, like a solid route. Then we should win from here unless we get completely screwed. Perfect, let's go. That's so good. <sighs> That's so good. Yeah. We're in this for sure. We're big in this. Rally. Pretty sure we just killed this with Bullet Seed. Easy. It's just a Lunatone. We still have our Chesto Berry online for Lunatone. We're in a really, really good position. Crit didn't matter there. We always killed. Okay, Lunatone should Hypnosis here. We should be able to just Bullet Seed, Bullet Seed. I guess I could Moonlight after the first Bullet Seed. But we just Bullet Seed. Let's go, you piece of sh Easy. Woo! Emerald Kaizo. Attempt one. Gym one. Was it a bloodbath? Yes, it was. Did I win? Yes, I did. <laughs> we take those, baby. I celebrate the gym one victory with some great Rust Earth Tunnel and Duford Town encounters, and then I clear the way through Duford Gym to face the second gym leader. Brawly is a pretty brutal RNG party full of hoping and coping. It's really tough to go into this fight riskless, so I decided to just go for a high-risk, high-reward strategy revolving around the Spiro I picked up earlier. The idea here is to pivot until Gyarados' Intimidates knock Hitmontop down to minus 6 attack. From here, I could then use Firo's Rage Attack to tank 2 Rock Slides and build up a plus 2 attack buff to sweep 4 of Brawly's Pokemon. Keep in mind that I do risk a crit every single time Firo gets hit. Nonetheless, I decided to risk it even further and go for extra rage boosts, which would allow a full sweep of his team. We never get crit here. This never crits. This never crits. This never crits. Please! Sh I shouldn't have gotten so greedy. I get my first real punishment in Emerald Kaizo for getting overly greedy with the rage setups. You're typically risking crits somewhere in this fight anyways, so the Firo sweep isn't inherently bad to go for when considering risk. But don't be like me and go for too many boosts. From here, it's a pretty desperate struggle to steer back into a chance at a sloppy victory, but Brawly unfortunately triumphs, sending me packing to attempt two. Starting with Trico once more, I get even better early encounters in attempt two and make it back to Rock sand pretty easily. With an incredible lead in Shell Armor Ammonite and Mag Cargo for the Leap, I'm able to make quick work of Roxanne and dash back to Duford for the run back with Brawly. Woo! Alright, let's get this bread, baby. Let's get this peanut butter. Okay, this is Fake Out. So we go Geodude to eat that, and then Gyarados, and then it's going to be Geodude and Gyarados until this is minus six. Yeah, keeping Secret Power from coming up is really nice. I might have been able to run Orenberry knowing this. Confuse? Just don't crit. Okay, pretty clean. Pretty clean, so it should be Hitmonlee next. Okay, nice Hitmonlee. This, I think, is going to be Rolling Kick. I'm pretty sure it's Rolling Kick, so we go straight into Gera and then Gyarados Geodude pivots. 
rolling kick can get really scary. Okay, well, that's minus one. But same deal, we're gonna bring Seeking back in and kill this. We could go Gloom, but I wanna use Gloom for Hitmon or Hitmon Shan. Give me like a confuse or something. Give me a nice confuse. Come on. <sighs> okay, so we can actually steer here. Let me see if Gloom can kill this. Come on, confuse. Unlucky. Come on, Confuse, please throw me this one. Give me this. Let's go, baby. This is going to die here. It might be a tiny range, but this probably dies, yeah? This is going pretty solid. But either way, let's start pivoting. This should be Rock Slide here. And then it's just Rock Slides and Mock Punches again. I wasn't kidding when I said this was going to be Pivot Simulator. <laughs> Come on. Let's go, baby. Love to see it. There's that Mox Luck. I was waiting for it to pop out. We could get another one here. Please? It's fine. Shadow Punch is chill, so we don't get flinched. Okay, we've got Cherry Berry online for Polyrath. Hypnosis? Okay. Okay, that's like a super high roll. We like high roll, high rolled. Okay, so he hits the Hypnosis here, so we gotta wake up. So it's just crit risk right now. Don't do it. Okay. We gotta dodge a crit. It's a 68% chance, not guaranteed. Okay, nice. Wake up. Just don't freeze, don't crit. I think we can actually take another one. We could win the speed tie and hit the range too. Yeah, we're not we're not dead. We can take another ice punch. Well, it's gonna brick break, I guess. Yeah, it'll brick break. So we like have to win the speed tie. Okay, we always win the speed tie and hit the range. Let's go. Hit the range. Come on, come on, come on. Seize us. Let's go, baby. Dex approved why Seeking's the goat, and I'm just carrying the torch, okay? Easy. This probably won't fake out, though, so this is actually kind of scary still. <laughs> Just fake out. Fake out. We're literally dead to one roll. Max roll kills us. One roll kills us. This is so unlikely to kill us. Let's go. It's just Hari now. <sighs> this thing is a demon, okay? So I could try to get a charm, but I'm risking some kind of crit. I know that for sure. Basically, we're going to get as many Intimidates as we safely can, and then we bring in Clam Pearl and try to clean this thing up. Saying Clam Pearl and Crit created the Freudian slip for... Cl it makes sense, okay? Cut me a break here. <laughs> if Clam Pearl dies, we can probably Revenge Guild Gera. Okay, give me a low roll here. Okay, that was a low roll. Nice. So Water Pulse is, a four to, is most likely a 5-hit KO because it only does 22 to 26. So I think we clamp and then start water pulsing. Okay, no para. I'm guessing it's a range on the next uh, on the next one. We can get another. We're never dead here. A confuse would be nice. Crit something. Okay, this is a random move coming out. Please no force palm. <sighs> Unlucky. And it's a crit. Goodbye, Seeking. I'm sorry, Caesus. You did great though, buddy. You did exactly what we need you to do. Woo! Wait. Bro, what? I mean, we're good. We win. You piece of shit. <laughs> so I guess we were dodging crit there. Wow. Either way, we take those, baby. I'd say Seeking is the only loss is super fun. To celebrate the decisive win over Brawly, I pick up my Mawville encounter and go fishing for the most important Pokemon going into Gym 3. Prage. Okay, it's a Chinshu. So... If it's not Volt Absorb, we just want to kill it because we don't want Dupes Claws to screw us from getting more. So to test it, we're going to click an electric move. If it goes through, we're just going to kill this. If it doesn't go through, then we know it's the one. Please don't go through, don't go through. Let's go! First try, VA Chinshu. Thank you, thank you. Thank you very much. After bagging my Volt Absorb Chinshu, I take a detour back to Granite Cave now that I have Nest Balls. <sighs> I think it's this one. This one. This one, this one, this one? Straight up. I think it's, it's one of these. This one? And then boom, boom, boom. And then there's like a patch down there we can stand on, right? Like right there, and then straight up. I'm too nice with it, baby, first try. I'm actually too nice with these puzzles, dude, wow. Let's go. Oh shit, this is 1%, isn't it? It's going to teleport, though. Like, I literally have to catch it, or it's going to teleport. So I'm probably just going to lose this encounter. One ball mocks. That's all it takes. Please. Ooh. 
Watson's gym trainers are the toughest yet, with Kirk and Angelo making me sweat profusely. But I make it through for the shocking showdown with gym leader number three. Listen, let's do it. Let's dance. All right, old man. Don't forget your walker, okay? All right, turn one, we fake out. Boom. Easy. This is HP grass here. Gloom eats that up. Big quad resist. Nice. Okay, so since we're slept, it's not going to T-Wave. This is going to be T-Bolt here. So really just dodging crits. So we're going to Sludge Bomb. Oh, it's Bite. Don't flinch. Okay, nice. Really good. Really clean start. Oh, let's go, baby. Um, I think we could be in Mega Drain kill range here. If we are, we want to kill with a Mega Drain. Let's see. Get a little bit of health back, you know, a little something. All right, let's see. Jolteon... Mega Drain is... F okay, yeah, Mega Drain won't kill. We have to Sludge Bomb. All right, Thunder Wave. Oh, God. I swear, if this flinches... Okay. That's pretty unlucky. But that's Gloom's main job, was to take down Jolteon. Unfortunately, though, if Lantern gets bad, Gloom can no longer come in and dodge an Ice Beam crit um, and play back up. So Gloom is pretty much off the table here. And here comes Lantern. Oh, please just be Ice Beam. I think ice only Ice Beam kills... Dugong hopefully baits out. No, actually, it won't bait out T Wave. You know what? I wonder if I didn't. Hari's not thick fat. It's guts. Okay. So this is gonna be. S oh, it's Ice Beam. Okay, just don't freeze and we're fine. <sighs> okay. So we fake out. Vital throw after that fake out. I think because of Lefties might still be a three hit KO. Send Force Palms a three-hit KO, too. So I think we Force Palm and try to get the Para. Now we just... We gotta dodge crits now. God, that's a high roll. Give me the Para, please. Just don't crit. Give me Para. Oh, this is looking really bad now. It's just really bad luck. Okay, let's steer. Let's see what we're gonna do. There's nothing else we can do. Like, we can't go Gera. We can't go Dugong. Gloom dies. This doesn't know I have VA yet, so it could try to click T-Bolt here, which would be really good. Yeah, I won't T-Wave yet. So this is... I think this is definitely T-Bolt. Okay, now it knows we have VA. So speed drop from Bubble Beam and good Confuse RNG is what gets us through this Lantern. We're okay taking damage in our Lantern. We have plenty of opportunities later to use our Volt Absorb and heal up. Please. Okay, good. I'm hoping I used up all my bad luck earlier. This is going to, like, tickle, but it's our highest roll. Speed drop is what we would really like out of this. Give us that speed drop. And then we pivot Dugong. Nice. Okay. So I think we always pivot Dugong here. We get really good routing off of this. So Dig is 67 to 79 on Lantern. So I think after we pivot around, we should still always kill. Easy. Okay, this is T-Bolt now. Okay, back in the Lantern. We're going to heal up the full here. Okay, we're going to Confuse Ray and then just Bubble Beam spam again. We're just chipping this down until it's in range for Sandslash to kill through Leftovers. Come on, hit yourself, hit yourself, hit yourself. Let's go. So good, so good, so good. Okay, here we go. Please be T-Wave. This should be T-Wave. This should be T-Wave. This should be T-Wave. Easy. All right, now we click Dig. Woo! And then this should be Ampharos here. We kill this through lefties with two digs, so the, the lose con is getting crit by HP Grass. But we used up all our bad luck, right? We're Battle Armor, baby. We're Battle Armor. Sandslash should have Battle Armor. Look at that design. Okay, here it comes. Here we go. Just dodge crit. Hold. Come on, Olive. Come on, Olive. Let's go, baby. That's so good. Nice. Nice. We're killing Amphi. Dude, that's so good. Battle armor. Battle armor sand slash. But let's keep it tight. Let's keep it right. Let's stay focused. This is still not... This is far from over. I'm a little scared of Electabuzz. Okay, there's Raichu. We go Gara here on the surf. And then we pivot back and forth with this in Lantern. There's the T-Wave. Expected. Okay, so I guess this is random between Body Slams and Surf now. Again, if Lantern starts getting worn down, we just pivot again and 
soak its heat bolt in the lantern and heal up. Oh, it's a Lumberry. I'm just gonna start killing. I forgot about Lumberry. I forgore. Yeah. Nice crit, you ass. I'm gonna go and get a heal here. But this is a, um, a nice demonstration of the might of Volt Absorb. So cracked. It's so nice. But yeah, this fight is just lots of pivoting. A lot of pivoting. That's how Brawly was, too. Where was that crit earlier? That was my first crit of the battle, brother. Here comes Big Buzz. Ice Punch or Fire Punch would be nice. But it's just probably... So nice! Okay, really good. Better than Psychic. Big Thick Fat. Now it's a T-Bolt coming out. Yeah, so we'll heal up here, and then I think we start working on this. We start trying to kill Buzz here. Yeah, if we can get this down to minus one, Sand Slash always kills with Dig. So we're just going to spam Bubble Beam, hope for a speed drop at some point, pivot around to heal as needed. Also shake off the minus Bidef if it happens. Okay. And then we just pivot around for Slash. Dude, I've gotten crit so many times. This is so cap. <laughs> so cap, dude. What is that, like the fourth time I've gotten crit? Fifth time? I guess I may as well just kill this with Lantern. Max roll is allegedly 32%. Oh, we get a crit. Huge. Crit mattered. Very good. Okay, so because of Intimidate, it thinks we have Intimidate and doesn't see VA, right? So we stay in and beam. Easy. Yeah, so it's pretty much just like bubble beam it down, pivot to heal as needed. If we get two speed drops by chance, we can pivot Sand Slash it and just end it. It already saw VA. So we'll go Gara here. I like Gara here. I want a T-Bolt to come out. Okay, this is T-Bolt. Yeah, we're, we're chilling. This is over. Like, how long it's going to take, we can't say, because we could get really screwed by Para, but, like, it's GG's, dude. It's done. Wait. Why did I go Dugong? What did I just... Oh, my God. That was such a bad misclick. Dude, I'm actually such an idiot. That's... Dude, that is so dumb. That Dugong was insane. I guess the silhouette sort of looked like Lantern. I don't know. There's Watson, folks. Watson's defeat marks the end of the Emerald Kaizo early game, and I move on towards the horrors that await in the mid game. The first Magma Gauntlet is riddled with Magma Grunts that rely on cheap, dirty tactics to make it insanely tough to plan riskless fights for. Their Pokemon often hold frustrating items like Focus Bands and Bright Powders. The first Magma Gauntlet is handled without too much stress, and I head towards Fall Arbor Town, taking on Red once more. Our old friend presents much more of a challenge this time with fully evolved starters, but his Espeon is extremely scary and risky to deal with more so than the others. Just as the long trek ends, I'm immediately thrown into the next Magma Gauntlet leading up to the showdown on the summit of Mount Chimney. More terrors await in this unsavory gauntlet, and I unfortunately lose some really important Pokemon. The run still looks solid, however, with my most important team members still alive for the upcoming boss battles on the mountaintop. After the grueling trek through both Magma Gauntlets, I run up Maxi's right-hand admin, Tabitha. This dude's team is absolutely stacked. Agron, in particular, is a menace and a half, with very few Pokémon comfortably taking a head smash from this demon. The Quick Claw on Agron just adds to the scare factor, but my Whiskash clutches up and takes down Big Threat number one after dodging multiple crits. When preparing for this fight, routing the order that Tabitha's team comes out is of utmost importance due to Weezen carrying Explosion. At full health, the AI always has a 10% chance to click Explosion if it sees no kills with other moves, and at 50% or lower, those chances just increase. If Weezing is Tabitha's last mon though, it will never explode, so baiting it to come out last is optimal. Flygon is another scary one, but Breloom keeps it in line and handles it with relative ease. I managed to take down Tabitha with no losses, which means several of my key members for Maxi are still available. While thoroughly challenging, Tabitha doesn't hold a candle to his boss that I have to fight next. Maxi is considered by many to be one of the toughest fights in Emerald Kaizo, and I quickly learned why. Nonetheless, uh, we start off with the EQ. Ideally, this just EQs us back and does not crit us. Okay, just don't crit and we're chilling. Perfect. That's a dead Registeel, baby. Just like we wanted. So far, perfect start so far. Okay, this is always HP Grass. So we go hard into Tentacle here. This is like incredibly scary here. This thing is a demon. Okay, nice. That actually looks like a kind of a low roll. 
So we have a we have to eat a crunch here. We got to dodge a crit, and then we have to hit a range with muddy water. All right, let's send that shit, baby. Big hold, come on, Tenta. Okay, hit the range, hit the range, baby, hit the range. Come on, come on, come on, hit the range, hit the range, hit the range, hit that, hit that, hit. Let's f go, baby. Let's go. That's so good. Okay, okay. That's so good. That's so good. That's huge. We need that. That's so good. We should be baiting out Earthquake now. There's Claydol. Yep. Okay, we want Earthquake here. That's what the Orin Berry's for. This, should, this shouldn't be Psychic. I'm pretty sure it's just EQ. We always go Gera regardless, though. It's okay if it's Psychic, but EQ is free. Okay. So this thing can go boom, okay? Right now, it's got a 10% chance. So first, we Waterfall. If we get real lucky, we get a little flinch. And then Double Edge doesn't always kill. It's a solid chance after the Waterfall, but it doesn't always kill. All right, give me that flinch, baby. Come on, flinch scripts activate. Give me the scripts. Okay, no flinch. This is fine. Easy tanks. All right, if double edge doesn't kill, it gets a little scary. So far, this is going like as good as we could want it to. We got the silk scarf for this, baby. We got the scarf on. Let's go. Okay, we're always baiting out T-Punch from Zam. Oh my god, this is so good. This is actually so good. So, Sceptile has to hit a range with X-Scissors. My Sceptile doesn't always kill. It's an incredibly good range. It's like 93% chance to kill. Easy. All right, let's not get screwed here. Easy. Oh, and we get the crit. Crit mattered. Crit mattered. Dude, the scripts are popping off for me today. I'm not going to lie. We just go hard mag cargo here. So we're just going to cycle between recovering and ancient powering on this thing. Okay, we got Petra Berry for this. Okay, that's fine. It's going to be giga draining now. All right, so this has a Lumberry. I don't think burning it brings any value because it's just going to keep giga draining. All right, boosters. Any boosters? Any boosters? We boosting? Okay, we recover again. We probably, after Giga Drains, it's probably like two more APs. The longer it takes to kill Crobat with AP, I think it's kind of better because the Dusclops has pressure. So we get less APs off on Dusclops. So taking longer on Crobat gives us more opportunities to get boosts. And then it's just less awkward for Dusclops. That thing's kind of a demon. Boosters? All right, we get one more chance to boost on the bat and then we'll see what we can do with Dusclops. Okay. So we're going into Dusclops unboosted. So I want to burn this first. I don't want it shadow balling. I'd rather S toss so I don't have to deal with drops. Nice, we hit it. It can it can shadow ball here though. When it drops below 50%, I believe it should always rest. So I need to I need to watch that. So we're gonna recover up. I ideally want to switch into Sceptile as it's going to sleep, and then I should be able to just kill it. I'm gonna recover again, and then I'm gonna I'm gonna AP. But Dusclops is quite buffed up in this. It's really hard to kill. I think it should always rest now. I think we just switch. Yeah, let's go hard Sceptile. Sceptile would never die here. It's gonna rest now for sure, right? A high a really high roll might kill. Hmm, it's fine. Okay. So we have a 99% chance for a three-hit KO here. And this can never kill us. So we're, like, pretty comfortable. I think it's GG's. I think we're looking at Deathless Maxi. A drop would be really cool here, too. That would just, like, seal the deal. Ooh, that's a high roll. Okay, that's GG's. It's over. First try, Maxi one Deathless, baby. Oh, that feels good. There it is. Woo! Emerald Queso tasting kind of good today. After surviving Maxi 1 with zero deaths, I recompose myself and clear out the Jagged Pass to make my way to Lava Ridge Town. I lose a potentially insane Torkoal encounter as it explodes on me. But this sets the tone for Gym 4. Flannery's Gym is not like the ones I've encountered up to this point, and it's possibly the toughest gym in the entire game. There's permanent sunny weather at all times, and the trainers in here have plenty of fire Pokemon and grass types with chlorophyll to properly abuse the sun and make it an absolute hell for the player. I had to bring my bulkiest members to tank the constant sun-boosted stab overheats being thrown around. And to add more fun in the sun, Solar Beam users run wild in here. And Solar Beam AI in Emerald Kaizo works pretty strangely. If the AI sees no kills with other moves and Solar Beam is the second highest roll, there's a 50% chance for it to be selected. If Solar Beam is the highest roll but doesn't kill, the same rule applies with the second highest rolling move. So it can get a little tricky figuring out which move is coming out. As if getting the Flannery wasn't difficult enough, she's gatekept by expert Keegan, who has an insane victory bell that will likely spill blood. By the time I reach Flannery, my box is looking thin, as I've been bleeding out and losing important mons in this gym. To 
put it simply, Flannery's a bit of a box check. If you don't have the answers, then you'll get outclassed and brute forced by your insanely hard-hitting Pokemon. With suboptimal Pokemon remaining, I fight for my life, taking out her Ninetales, Charizard, and Typhlosion. But it's too little too late, and my second attempt of Emerald Kaizo is stopped dead in its tracks by Gym Leader number 4. After an utterly humiliating defeat by Flannery, my mental was in shambles going into attempt 3, but like a knight in shining armor, an unlikely hero answers my call. In attempt 3, my Emerald Kaizo experience would change forever.